<laughs> do, 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 do you like how I did that? I was like, oh, we should be switching was like good. Uh, now. <laughs> right. It's, it's oh. always like, you know, when I expect new shows and they do the like three, two, and then the one, they just point the one and then they point at you. But I'm never looking at the screen when you count down. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I don't, I, I don't give you the fingers. So. so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, welcome to the kitchen uh, for another episode of Owlbear Soup will be your sous chefs for the day. I am Justin. Uh, and I'm Rich. And I, I like this. We're, we're in the kitchen. We're like, we're inviting everyone into the kitchen. I thought we'd be in the dining room, maybe. Um, interesting. <laughs> I got so well, we're, many we're like, mental images of where the chef. Yeah. yeah, we're the chefs. That's right. <laughs> okay. So, 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 so it, you know, I imagine we're in a diner and people are like uh, looking over into us uh, and we're, we're just, you know. Oh. I gotcha. I gotcha. So people are still comfortable. They're not forced to like stand yeah. over by the walk-in fridge, right? So they're they're in those great bar stools. They're watching over. They're looking at us. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, it's 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 more of a more of a food truck. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> and we're just getting smaller and smaller. Uh, uh, you know, we are. We're, yeah. <laughs> we're actually just grilling in the backyard. I. It's. <laughs> <laughs> It's a drive-through Perfect. window. Nice. Um, but I, but I, but I did hear uh, Chef Alberti is cooking up some axe beak uh, noodle soup. Uh, we heard a, a couple of a uh, couple of our patrons, a couple of our co uh, other co-chefs, are, uh, are are feeling a little under the weather. So a uh, little hug, buddy. I expect uh, expect that to to sh show up any any time now. Uh, we sent some <laughs> adventurers through the portal with it. So so long as nothing bad happens on the way. It, you, you, it should be there any time now. Yeah, right. We're, we've been told that these portals work, so we'll yeah. see what happens. Yeah. We'll <laughs> Otherwise, see. we might have we'll another. Have... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. So, uh, Rich, how's it going? It is going well. Uh, I will say, um, good and bad. You know, we're 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 on both parts of it. I think. Um, been playing a couple games this week, but uh, but our our regular game of Pathfinder Two that we've been playing now for three months without yeah. a pause, like a weekly without game. Without a pause. What what am I in college or something? You know, it was this game that yeah. just kept going and going. We didn't have our first break until last week, and I was super sad. And then this week, two of our players had to go um, because the world is opening back up, and they can't commit their Saturdays anymore. And it was it was a yeah. dark feeling. <laughs> yeah, that was a uh, it was a little sad. So yeah. now we you have know, to find some um, more players and all that right. jazz. And yeah, it just it just reminded me of when quarantine started and my campaigns all ended. <laughs> oh, no. Now it's happening again. So we'll we'll get back to a normal thing pretty soon. But I was I was pretty depressed um, last night at that. That was a fun game, and I'm liking it. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, I, I, I filled the void with uh, playing uh, MLB The Show, which is a mm -hmm. baseball game on my PlayStation. Right. Uh, I played a little bit of Destiny, but I yeah. spent way too much time playing Magic the Gathering Arena. Oh my god, I spent <laughs> okay. so much time playing that game. Okay, so I, I... won't spend money on it, but sure. I, I, uh, I, I'm able to get enough free cards and enough free packs that I can have a good time. Uh, I'm never going to get like super high ranked, right? You know, I figure I'm going to stay right around the silver range where uh -huh. I l probably lose about as many, maybe a little bit more than, <laughs> than I win, but it's fun. It's a fun game and I've been playing it on my phone and it's, yeah, it, it scratches that magic itch for me. Okay. I like that. I mean, I've, I've had that for a long time and I think that I went with Hearthstone because they eventually built Battlegrounds and Arena and I didn't need to have cards myself. I could still mm -hmm. kind of play with a, with someone else's cards, which is honestly how I like playing Magic a whole lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's always fun to just be like, you and me, let's play at the same level. Let's use your cards. Cool. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And that's yeah. kind of that's kind of what I've been doing is 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 a lot of it's just like playing other people who are at my level with because I'm yeah. because of the rank the way they do rankings. And mm -hmm. I, I've spent like zero dollars and I'm doing okay. But that's exciting. I also don't play to win. 
uh, like you've played games with me i i i play to have a good time i don't play to win so the decks i build are ridiculous and have like one way to win and if i pull that off it's awesome if i don't it's like eh. <laughs> we used to play uh, i remember with with the big group of friends we would all play decks that had unique win conditions in them so like i would mm -hmm. always play the deck where if i got my life up to 40 or 50 and i played the right card i could win um another one played if my library has more than 300 cards in it i win that was a fun deck to oh, play wow. against <laughs> yeah so it was just like maximizing chaos like well if you're going for that i don't need to fight you i just need to win before you do and it was the strangest game um yeah. because uh we were all playing to win but not in the same way <laughs> exactly yeah like, like i like playing to win in ludicrous ways mm -hmm. um all right so uh i think we've uh we we, we don't have well actually um yeah we I think we covered our personal gaming. Ooh, so uh, I, I, I did play a game. I gotta no. I gotta tell you about this game, Justin. Justin. Oh. Okay. What? Um, because huh. <laughs> um, <laughs> I I've been for a long time really curious about escape room in a box games. Um, I like puzzles. You know me. I like to design a good puzzle every now and then, and yeah. um, I like escape rooms and. I was very curious about how they would translate into the board game market. So I've played a couple of them lately. Um, a couple of the early ones I played were basically decks of cards, right? The uh, Escape, there it is, um, is one of those where it's just a deck of basically 100 cards and you 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 know sort through them, play them, and, and win the game eventually, you know, about 45 minutes maybe. Um, mm -hmm. But the one I played recently is one that's been on the shelf. It's in a cool box, Escape It Room in a Box Flashback. Uh, it's actually by Mattel, and they put a bunch of production quality into making this game. Um, and it was actually a lot of fun. We, we both played it. Uh, it took us about an hour to kind of break our way out of it. Um, but it was great. Like lots of pages, lots of different puzzle types. Uh, you know, you got your acrostics, you got your fill in the blanks, you got some weird words that you got to sound out. Um, to get the real words. There were physical boxes with physical locks on them. Um, what? They, were, they were plastic, you know. <laughs> you could break them if you wanted to, but <laughs> in the spirit of the game. Um, had a lot of, like, hidden secrets. It was a really cool experience. And oh, nice. I, I like that we have gotten to this point in the escape room game market where you can now buy a game that will have secrets in it, and if you tell yourself not to go looking for them until it's time, um, you can get really surprised by... Um, some of the stuff they do. Um, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. The other one I played recently was Box One. It's Neil Patrick Harris's brand. I don't know. <laughs> He's connected to it. Um, and it was really fun. Same I way. Lots know... of secrets. I won't tell you about them. <laughs> that's, uh, well, I uh, hopefully we'll, we'll have to save them for uh, Thanksgiving, family Thanksgiving. And mm -hmm. um, that'll be a ton of fun. <laughs> it's a good, that's a good solo one. You're supposed to play it by yourself in a room. Oh. Don't let anyone see it. Yeah. Oh. Box one, Ooh. made by one, for one, just you. <laughs> oh, all, um, right. all right. All right. It's really great. I like cool. that they're accessible. People get to play them. You can play them. No problem at all. Uh, you don't need to have uh, a mastery of Morse code or, or semaphore. Uh, it's great. <laughs> Highly I, I imagine you have a mastery of both of those things. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been doing code this whole time. <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and move us on into the news. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Do what you want. <laughs> so so we've, 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 we've been talking a fair amount about conventions, and I did not pull any convention news. However, Rich, mm -hmm. I believe you have something to, to kick us off with. I do. Um, I am excited. So I think... Um... Conventions didn't end up being part of my experience until PAX, but I remember having friends that went to Gen Con in college and I was super jealous, right? Gen Con was like this mm -hmm. golden glow on top of the mountain, whatever, and I could, couldn't get there. Um, and I'm in the same boat right now, right? So we got quarantine, we can't get there. Uh, Gen Con has announced the pop-up Gen Con 2021 program, which is a way to bring a bit of that experience to friendly local gaming stores which is a thing that I would have died for 10 years ago. <laughs> I would have like gone to Gar Guardian Games in Portland and been like, come on, you got to bring this stuff in. Um, I want to feel it. I want to feel like Gen Con. Um, and maybe it feels like another version of like Free RPG Day in a lot of ways. Um, but I'm excited for more of that stuff. A lot of publishers have um, signed up to offer some of their newly released games for these. Um, uh, Pandasaurus, Ravensburger, uh, Catalyst, Forbidden Games. I mean, there's a lot of great folks on this list. Um, 
and they are right now taking hosts basically uh you can sign up your your favorite local gaming store i suppose tell them to sign up don't sign up for them but uh, they could host a local <laughs> gen con just for you <laughs> i now 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 there's a part of me that just wants to go online and find all the <laughs> like game stores in the u.s and mm -hmm. sign them up i yeah. think i could I, I think i could write a script for that right <laughs> oh my gosh i think so i think you could and then they would they would be everywhere um we were so excited by gen con that we ran a convention at our college instead like just a weekend long thing uh so i ran yeah. a convention long before i ever went to one <laughs> but uh this is a cool way to do kind of both I, I i feel like that's how a lot of like smaller cons got started like a bunch mm -hmm. of people just got really excited about cons and then we're like uh -huh. oh there's no cons near us like we can't make it to gen con let's make it in uh i don't know i know a warehouse somewhere <laughs> right uh we you know we were part of like a student group so we rented a hall on campus even and uh and oh, went wow. for the whole weekend you know we had we had to abide by like the curfew or whatever on campus you know but still it was like okay we're gonna have big board gaming day role-playing room all sorts of things it was fun we had like maybe 50 people it was great <laughs> that's that's great that's uh more more than in my college experience yeah <laughs> we wanted it really bad <laughs> And, and there's something that I want really bad right now, and What's that's that? a gaming table. Uh, I, I mean, I have a really nice gaming table. You know, it's big, it's huge. I, I That was my segue into the next news item. It, it, it's big, it's huge, it's great. Uh, but there's, a, in in unlike fashion, I was I was looking at a, a, a Kickstarter, and I, I normally avoid it, but I was looking at Kickstarter, and there's this, this Kickstarter for Game Toppers 3.0. And so these yep. are just like, there, there's things you put on your table and they make your table better. Or if you look way down, what you can do is you can get like a, a, a table that breaks down and you can put it back together. It's kind of like the um, geek chic, but, uh -huh. uh, but, but like target. Um, but, but I mean that in like the best way, right? Like right. Or Ikea, I, yes. Ikea's, Ikea is a better one because where it's not like the premium, like hand it down, uh quality of, of 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 different products and stuff it's it's meant for a different market it's ch more inexpensive uh it's movable the parts are like plastic and like metal and aluminum and stuff so it's very portable and it's i don't know it's, i i've just i'm kind of in love with these right now just because they are so like yeah they're they're just exactly what I was looking for because, you know, because yeah. I'm never going to afford one of those fancy geek chic tables, but I can afford one of these. And, you know, if I can get five people around a table with this, I'm in. I, I will tell you that we got one for like uh, jigsaw puzzles because uh, they were like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it was a hundred bucks. It was a cheap thing, but it was yeah. great because the other part is we could pick it up and put it over there. Like just, you know, set it along the wall, get it out of sight. You know, it doesn't need to be part of your yeah. life all the time. Um, these game toppers are really cool for that. Just bring it out, put your game on it, get your favorite cool vinyl mat for the bottom, mm -hmm. you know, uh, which they are also selling quite a few of those on here. Um, and these don't run you too much. Like those huge tables are, you know, in the thousands. This one, um, the Lestrade, which is their smallest one, is is going what about four hundred dollars, three ninety nine or so. Um, yeah, yeah. Plus essential so. upgrades. Um, if you want something that's going to run like, say, Dwellings of Eldervale, you might need something significantly larger. Um, uh, but but even so, like you yeah. you you could get one of these tables for much more ex inexpensive than you could get one of the you know seven to ten thousand dollar tables. It'll get you playing, and it's going to be a great experience. So I, I don't know. <gasps> I just I thought these were really cool. They're actually showing Dwellings of Elder Vale on here. I wasn't even ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I wrote puzzles for that game. I love that game. <laughs> like, I, I, thought you, I thought you looked ahead. <laughs> no, that was a cool surprise. Um, I wasn't paying enough attention. Very oh, cool. Man. Yeah, so these are these are neat. I, I would be all over these. Um, well, nice work trolling Kickstarter. Uh, I did not do that this time at all. Um, of what? I know. I'm looking for more like at home stuff, um, uh, solo play things. So I was excited that Cubicle 7 is renewing the Lone Wolf RPG and confirming new books. Uh, did you ever play the Lone Wolf uh, books? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I don't even know how to describe them. RPG adventure the, books. The, the they had RPG adventure books. 
Yeah, it was okay. Okay. So it was a choose your own adventure book. Okay. Except first page was here's your character sheet. Um, you need some dice to play it. And as you go through, like it's not just, you know, I choose this page or choose this page. It's like make an attack roll. If you succeed, go to this page. If you fail, go to this page. Stuff like that. Oh wow. Um and uh, and it was fantastic. The Lone Wolf games, like I, I played those in I had to be middle school. Uh, it was such a cool way to actually, you know, learn, do a story, except not with other people around. <laughs> oh, man, that's so cool. Uh, I didn't so know that was a thing. Oh, gosh. I don't know how many there were, honestly. Um, but uh, I'm excited. They are moving to Cubicle 7, and I want to hear so much more news about it, uh, whether it is, you know, up in, in massive scale or whether they're going to put more of those little books out. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, I love those. Yeah, see Lone Wolf. That's right. <laughs> right? See it in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, uh, kind of on the same line of of people bringing th stuff to the masses, as Modi Games is going to be distributing Plague Inc. Uh, Plague Inc. is a board game that was based on the um, the mobile app game, which was kind of like Pandemic, uh, but this. Right, yeah, I mean, it, it's a weird thing, right? You do, 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 do. But if you've played mm -hmm. the the mobile game, you know it's very different than Pandemic. In in in, you know, it's it's a very fun game, and uh, yeah, I'm just as Modi, like, you know, they're 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 going to be uh, distributing it. Uh, this mm -hmm. was a Kickstarter game, and it was super successful. So it's it's really fun to see when when as when um when successful Kickstarter games get picked up by get bigger game distributor distribution or publishers, and this mm -hmm. is one of those times. Very cool. Yeah, this is the one where you play. You, you're not stopping the pandemic. You are the pandemic, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, okay. uh, in Plague Inc., uh, you, you and uh, up to four other players take the role of the deadly mutating disease. Uh, and it <laughs> evolves unique symptoms as they compete against other players to infect everyone on globe. Uh, then Wild. there's the Armageddon expansion, which adds a fifth player uh, strategic depth and new abilities and different disease play styles. So, uh, nice. yeah, I'm pretty excited cool, about cool. that. Yeah, yeah, okay, sounds good. Um, oh my gosh, I, I'm gonna uh, skip on my list because I, I have another individual product I want to talk about real quick. Um, mm -hmm. That's reminding me a lot because I, I like the idea of giving some more heft to the opposition, I suppose. <laughs> um, and, uh, and there's the book on DMs Guild that, uh, that recently came out that I just wanted to chat about real quick. It's called Traps, Trammels, and Triggers, Nefarious Devices for Your Protection uh, by Grim Press. Um, it is basically a book of traps, uh, which I'm always a fan of because I want to know why people make traps. Like, what is their design goal behind creating obstacles for their players? Um, and one of the things I like about this is right away in the very beginning, it splits all the traps up by specific lists. Um, this is like a 50 page book. So there's tons and tons of things, but they split things into alarms, deterrence, obstructions, offensive traps. And, uh, and it's kind of a distinction that I don't get a lot when I'm looking for traps in my games is just well, what, why do you want to trap here? Why, why do you want this in your dungeon? Is it just to blow someone up or do you want a trap that like slows someone down while letting everybody else know that there's enemies here so that they can actually, I mean, that's, that's how we use traps. <laughs> so <laughs> um, I don't have a lot of fireball traps in my house. <laughs> I, I mean, um, I don't have a lot of them. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure, fair enough. Um, <laughs> but uh, but I'm, I'm really excited just to see a whole bunch of these. There's plenty of variants in here. Um, you know, uh, you want a barricade? Cool. Do you want it to be on fire, just super sturdy? You're looking for a siege wall kind of thing? Or do you need something totally different? Um, uh, you know, dealing with some coal dust explosives, oh, scrolling, scrolling, uh, or just fireworks. Fireworks are great. No one recognizes that fireworks are actually the best alarm trap in the world. <laughs> um, so cool little book um no no you don't fireworks aren't a trap for you <laughs> I, I i mean i i like fireworks i uh, uh okay. <laughs> I, I don't know i might be into it so uh i'm gonna go and jump to the other part of designing dungeons and that's decorating them uh yes. so dungeon decorator <laughs> is a tile drafting game uh, by Slugfest Games. So those are the folks who uh, put out the Red Dragon in and that type of stuff. Uh, so the evil overlord has died, and Ooh. along with him, his poor tastes in furnishing. 
Uh, now the monsters and villains of the realm need to step up their game and create nefarious layers to become the next boss. So, uh, yeah, this is this this is a game where it has a bunch of tiles, a bunch of like hallways and stuff, and oh, wow. it's a it's a drafting game. So you draft the tiles, and boom, 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 and you build your dungeon. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it's a game. So I I don't know anything more <laughs> about it, but I, I'm picturing tiny towns, like a tiny town oh, but sure. a dungeon. Yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> I like that. I'm just feeling a bit like there's so many ways to do a cool campaign here, I think. I think you start with maybe Clank, right? So you're exploring a dungeon, <laughs> battling the Overlord, defeat them. You move on. Time passes. <laughs> then we move on to this game after that. Um, yeah. Probably another game in the middle, which we might talk about a little bit later. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, very exciting. All right. So uh, well, that, are you ready? Oh, you have one more before we jump into one our more review? real quick. Yes. Um, uh, yeah. And this is actually really interesting to me as, uh, as you know, a designer, someone who likes D and D a bit um, is that this week they, they put out a do D and D, excuse me, D and D studio blog. I almost said do and do um, called uh, who we are and what we do. And it's kind of a look from uh, Ray Winninger, um, the CEO was the coast at this point, D&D. Um, and it's kind of all about like what they do and kind of a little bit about their process, which is good because people have had a whole lot of questions about what they do and their process <laughs> lately. Um, and, uh, and so this is just a, a cool kind of look into it, looking at like, what is the D&D studio? Who gets to decide what gets produced? How do they contact people, you know, to be part of the team? Um, whether they take pitches, they, they don't uh, <laughs> from the outside world. How long does it take to make a product? You know, things like that. Um, and uh, it's kind of cool. It's a, it's a neat start. This is going to be the beginning of a series, I hope. Uh, and I hope what it does is it takes a game that... I still think in so many ways is this, you know, little tiny thing. And it's not, it's part of a huge, enormous corporation and the decisions that go into it are so corporate. Um, and uh, I feel like as fans, uh, we still think it's kind of like this, this small team homegrown sort of thing. And, and that's not quite how they are making decisions these days. So it's a cool uh, insight into what that means for the biggest RPG company there is. You know? Nice. That's. I mean, I, I think that's good insight for everybody, right? Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, just knowing, like, you know, when when people say, "Oh, I don't like this option," you know, you fix it or whatever. What what kind of time frame they're talking about? That these books take over a year. Uh, who pitches the games in the first place? Stuff like that. Uh, you know, who pitches the products that don't get made? Stuff like that. It's it's kind of neat, and I'm excited to read yeah. more. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, then that's going to bring us to our next segment. Uh, and in this next segment, I believe Rich is appropriately dressed. I am. I am. I got the wrong vault on, but, you know, it's an old hoodie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we are going to be talking uh, this week about the Fallout role-playing game from, uh, you know, Modifius. I don't know how to... Modifius? Yeah, oh, I guess I, 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 say, I don't Modifius. know how to pronounce it. Uh, hmm. uh, I... Huh. We should have asked for a pronunciation guide. But uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, so Fallout, uh, it, the role-playing game is a role-playing game that uh, was recently kickstarted uh, successfully. Um, there's folks in the chat who have uh, said they've, they, they, they were backers. And uh, this game uses the 2D20 system. Right. I've been very curious about the 2D20 system, but I've never I've never played it. Um, mm -hmm. And then we read this book, and now it's like, oh, I understand now. I understand right. the appeal of the 2D20 <laughs> system. Yeah, so I, I wanted to talk about that. I mean, it's also part of Dune, um, which game that just came out. So I'm excited to to learn more about that. Um, and I also just want to talk about like the the Fallout flavor that we've got going here because this book is immersive. Like if you mm -hmm. if you played Fallout for like New Vegas yesterday, uh, this book's gonna feel great. <laughs> you know, yeah, um, it's got everything you want in there. Yeah, and I, I will say that's something because I've I've already started to work on the Dune book for a future review. Everybody, maybe next week we'll talk about Dune. Um, <laughs> and and I will say they have they they do a really great job of of bringing the feeling of the property into the game. So you know, and we'll talk about that next week when we talk about Dune. Yeah. But this week, talking about this one, if you look at the, even the table of contents, that feels very much like something you would see in the uh, you know in the video game. Yeah, really true to it. And it's going to 
be all the way through this this book as well. Um, mm -hmm. But but take a look at this real quick uh, if you're looking at the the table of contents. Um, I love this. Uh, uh -huh. The equipment section, chapter four, like chapter three, character creation, awesome. They've got what thirty pages. That seems like enough to make a character. Uh, yep. The, the equipment section is a hundred pages long. It's a hundred pages long. <laughs> that is that is a lot. Of, that's a lot. A lot of gear. You got to get them big guns. <laughs> you got to get them explosives. Like you just got to have it all. Um, yeah. And I love and that. That's, but that's it, one of the things for you expect with uh, with, with Fallout is 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 mm -hmm. that kind of that kind of level of equipment because there's just so yes. so much equipment that's involved in the game itself right and modifications and you know add-ons that you can oh there's so much stuff it's it's a dense system but um mm -hmm. you'll also see there's lots of of core information about the world here uh for many of you fallout folks uh, it will be familiar you know mm -hmm. um seeing our vault tech our corporations commonwealth stuff like that um but yeah it gets started here with the the welcome to the wasteland right uh pick a job that's special to you i love this diagram down here because it's fallout it's right there yes it is <laughs> got your little yeah, ball I, boy <laughs> oh man yeah i mean every everything like w <laughs> when you go through through this and like you're, you're building your characters and you're doing everything and we, we may get a little bit more uh in a second but it, but everything just feels so fallout so special it does mm -hmm. <laughs> right it's, it's a big core of the game and you're going to be excited about how often it shows up in this book <laughs> um yeah but but special is the deal right your seven stats we'll we'll get into those in a bit but uh, but like you said mm -hmm. the big deal is the the actual 2D20 system, uh, which I was very curious about, and here we go. Um, mm -hmm. It's a it's a wild variant of. It's going to feel more at home if you are used to playing with percentile dice. I think it's just using D20s instead. Um, but uh, up at the top, it's got the the summary, which is uh, you have attributes, you have skills, you add them together to create a high number. Uh, maybe if you're really good at something, that's like nine, right? Um, mm -hmm. And then you roll 2D20 and you try to get underneath that total. Yeah, so, and so yeah, the it. GM or the storyteller is going to give you how 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 difficult it is, uh, and then sometimes you only have two d twenty, but you have to get three successes. Right. So the way to do that is through uh, uh, action points, <laughs> which yes. I, I I I like the action points, mm -hmm. um, because then it gives an a a a a moment for for you to go oh I, well I don't have enough action points. Let me borrow some from the GM. And then the GM gets yes. the action points, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is I'm pretty excited about. It's a very cool system. I also like that you generate action points by getting more successes than you need. So you are incentivized yes. to roll tons of dice as, as often as you can. Uh, so that's very cool. I really like how that works. Uh, it seems like a neat setup. Um, it's going to take D&D folks a little bit to, uh, to get to rolling low. Uh, actually, rolling mm -hmm. a 20 is bad in this game. It introduces complications for every 20 you roll. <laughs> so yeah, yeah oh and i like that too is is you can make things even more complicated so instead of just rolling a 20 and i don't know if you have that page picked out yet uh but instead of rolling a 20 you could say well this is extra difficult so if you roll a you know a 19 or 20 then you get the the bad effect as well uh, right absolutely and i like that mechanic <laughs> um this is pretty wild i i was looking at this yeah uh because you can roll way more d20s. I can say something is a difficulty five, and you have to get five successes, which, uh, as a statistics teacher, is if you have a 50 50 chance, like it's such a good way to say this is impossible, but I'll let you try it. Because if you're rolling 50 50 and you have to get five successes, that's a what a one in 32. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, it's just such a nice way to be like, sure, try it. Uh, whereas in D&D, &D, we don't really have those options. Um, you know, if I say, sure, try it, uh, and you roll a 20, then you you do it, I guess. So let's move on. Yeah. Uh, this game can make it very difficult to be successful at things. Um, there's a page in here that's got like the difficulty examples. And a five is like convincing an enemy to stand down or shooting a target uh, at long range on a stormy night. So it's stuff that shouldn't be that possible, but you should have a chance. Yeah. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, Rich, your hair looks great. Oh, hey, good thanks. Haircut. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> Is it looking good? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody ever compliments my haircut. I get a haircut every week, sometimes multiple times a week. I've only gotten, th wait, one this year. <laughs> yep. <laughs> 
I forgot gotten, what year it was for a second. I was trying to count this week. last August as this year. Right. <laughs> okay. Oh man. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and we're just kind of continuing through looking a little bit at the combat stuff. Um, the combat's interesting because I, I like, Oh wait, it, did, did you grab a picture of that page? Uh, okay. Maybe not. I mean, there, not there's, a... there's one, yeah, there's one thing I really like about the combat is, is that, uh, you can roll random to see which body part you affect. And oh, that's, that's right. Kind yes. of, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's kind of just built into the, into the entire, the entire thing. Entire yeah. Thing. Uh, oh my gosh. And it's wild. You're not going to do a ton of damage in this game, right? That's, that's not the deal. You have specific D sixes. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, and like one of the sides of it is like two damage, a couple or one, I think. Um, yeah. Uh, which is wild. And then there's the, the face is one damage plus one damage effect trigger, which is fun. Right. So that would be things like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, hitting your, uh, reducing your DR on your, on your armor or reducing the radiation uh, that you're yes. able to, radiation damage you're able to take. Yeah. And there's, there's stuff like, you know, you can spend your action points to add more damage, more dice of damage as well. So there's, there's a lot of this that feels like not the VAT system in Fallout, but like a cool RPG variation on it, right? So I have a lot of choices. Well, okay, I don't know what body part. I'm going to do more damage. I'm going to do, you know, this huge massive attack with five dice, uh, which is a lot of fun. Um, the random hit location is great. If you ever do five points of damage, you automatically add an injury effect um, to whichever <laughs> area you nice. hit. Um, and the table is wild. Like if you get hit in the the arms, I think you drop your weapon. You know, it's it's very Fallout style deadly. <laughs> it is it's what you expect it is. from this game. Yeah, and so for a critical hit occurs when a character oh, suffers five or more damage on one hit. And then it, yeah, and then a critical hit imposes an injury on the character, which confers a penalty depending on the location. So, yeah, there's some of these that are pretty, pretty, pretty juicy. Right. So, oh, definitely a deadly game. <laughs> yeah. Um, and here we go. Uh, by the way, uh, this is where we talk about special, right? So, this is your right. attributes. You know, it gives you a little go to, and sure, it's not a percentile system like. Uh, you know, like you would expect by playing the game. This is a, a, a much more streamlined version of the game for RPG setting. So, uh, but yeah, no, it's so cool. And I, I, I really like, you know, when these are just straight out of Fallout. And I like the luck stat. I like the luck stat a lot. Right. So luck d doesn't, so the way luck works, which, which I, I think was genius, is that <laughs> it doesn't apply to, so what you do is you normally take an attribute and a skill and you add those together. Sometimes, uh, your GM, your storyteller might say, oh, by the way, eh, this is more lucky than intelligence. So you're going to have to roll your luck and your your skill to do that, um, which is great because then you can also like spend little luck points and then roll whenever you want, decide you just want to be lucky instead of being intelligent. So which I right. think is cool. Like, oh, you know, that's an intelligence uh, something check. Well, mm -hmm. you know, I think I'm going to I'm going to rely on my luck i'm gonna spend yeah. a luck point and i'm gonna roll my luck and i'm like yes that's what i want right and i love that by being luckier you get more points and abilities to do that you know it's just it, it works all well together it's fantastic yeah i, I gotta so say good. that coming up with six stats based around the word special is one of the smartest rpg things i've ever seen mm -hmm. <laughs> i'll say it out loud um yeah but absolutely, when you start this game, they all start at five. You get a couple points to boost a couple. You can drop some to four to boost some more as well. Um, so your stats are not super high. Uh, your skills are also not going to be super high. Um, giving you uh, often, like, you know, in that 50-50 realm, and if you were bad at something, you were, you were bad at it. <laughs> yeah. If you have a low charisma and you don't have any skills in persuading people, you're going to fail that check. You know? Yeah. <laughs> it's just the way it is. Um, yeah. After that, you get to pick one of your uh, one of the uh, major groups. I think there's there's six in the game, you know, and that's stuff like Brotherhood of Steel, uh, being a vault survivor, a, a vault hunter, being a survivor, just out in the wastelands. Um, here's the ghoul. <laughs> mm -hmm. You're a necrotic post-human. Couldn't get yeah. into a vault so these... facility. You got warped. <laughs> yeah, and those are so good. Yeah, like you could also be a uh, a Mr. Handy. A, a, that's right. <laughs> uh what was the other one a uh mutant yeah 
Oh, a super yes, mutant. A super mutant. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. I didn't so, want to so put good. them all I, in this. I just put the cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So no, it's 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 really cool. And then and then here, this is another part of character creation that I really loved. And they pulled this right out of the game. These are your perks. Yes. Uh, it, it it has what they do as well as the requirements. So it even feels like uh you know going through the perk mm -hmm. tree on yep. uh on the Fallout video game. Mm -hmm. And, Multiple uh, ranks for yeah. some of these. They do improve if you want to. I think Commando is the only one on this page, or Chem Resistant, that has a second rank. So you can kind of decide mm -hmm. how much you want to specialize and where you want to go. As long as you're meeting the requirements, you're fine. You know? <laughs> mm -hmm. This feels very Fallout. It does. Uh, it does. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, so the uh, the Meyer Larks. These, th this is a example of what, whenever you're looking at this book, this is towards the back, of course. And uh, it in and this is this is some of the the enemies, some of the the Denzians that you can approach, you can find while you're out there. Uh, and everybody knows and loves uh, the Mirelurks from the game. But right. uh, yeah, no, I, I and, and I like how easy this this stat block is to read. That's one thing that's very it interesting is. about a lot of games is 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 how easy is their stat block to read. And that's one of the things I like to look for. And in a 2D20 system, I didn't know what to expect, right? And this is, this is very easy to follow. Yeah. Look, uh, it's it's Pincer's attack is body plus melee. It looks like they've got a four body and a melee one. Add them up, you get a five, right? So I'm rolling. Yep. I'm trying to get a five or less. Uh, and if I hit, mm -hmm. three dice of damage. Um, you can see they've got initiative. They've got defenses, uh, physical damage resistance, energy damage resistance. Some creatures can lower these things. Creatures only got five hit points, you know? Like we were saying, five points is a critical hit. Like, uh, actually, it's yeah. going to take a Meyer Lurk down. So <laughs> yeah, this is this is a low-level enemy. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, But then on the other hand, I don't know if level seven is a, a high-level enemy, but... It goes up uh, to 10, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it, yeah. This, this, this one seems seems pretty intense. Uh, you know, this is your your everybody's favorite rad scorpion. You know, I just run from rad scorpions typically in the game. Oh, totally, totally. And I think that's that's what they're what they're talking about here as well. Is oh yeah, you probably just want to run from these guys. Uh, mm -hmm. Where where the the uh, Meyer Lurk has a uh, super mutants are in the book, by the way. You uh, can both play them, and there's a lot of monsters. <laughs> there's many yeah, variations. Yeah, there are. Uh, um, but yeah, so so you know the the, the Mirelurk had uh, five hit points. This has twenty one hit points. So yeah. that's it's gonna it's gonna take you a little bit a uh, little bit of yeah, a little bit more time DR to do with this four four. Mm -hmm. So I, there was a mention of like some of the huge explosions, the big guns you can have in this game. You're gonna need that stuff to take care of some of these bigger creatures. Um, your small yeah. arms, uh, unless you've got huge bonuses to damage, are not gonna cut it. Um, no, we we also have to point out that these monsters uh, under inventory it says butchery right. If you're a scavenger, it tells you exactly what you can get by butchering up the rad scorpion for food. <laughs> yeah. So uh, with a successful uh, endurance survival check with a difficulty of one, uh, this yields two portions of rad scorpion meat. Uh, okay, if an effect so is rolled, that also yields one rare material or a rad scorpion egg. Uh, if two effects are rolled, and then here, let's just take a quick look. Now we'll look at butchery real quick for the uh, Meyer Lurk. The scavengers can butcher a dead one. Uh, difficulty zero. All right, this yields that one portion of Meyer Lurk. <laughs> yeah. So essentially, like you just roll, and every success gives you something. Right. This would there's be my a, assumption. Yes. There's there's a lot of rules in here for survival. Right. There's uh all the food that you need, all the the. Uh, the water that you have to find, like if you get rads, how you're going to lower them, stuff like that. Like it's, they have gone into making this game an intense survival experience. Yeah. Oh man. Now it's like, yeah. now I'm now now it's like I kind of you know wait we 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 just took little clips from the book, but now I'm like oh man right. now now I now I really want to dive into it more, um, <laughs> and I'm excited about this. I'm excited about talking about Dune next week. Um, mm -hmm. I'm also you know what else I'm also excited about the changes that are happening to the saving throw show channel so uh i'm, I'm going to bring this up very briefly uh so uh, make sure to support the patreon uh that way you guys get the 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 founders pin uh this is only good until april 30th so uh you, you want you want to get that initial backer pin uh, uh hop on there join the patreon and uh yeah become be, become part of the society 
Yes, yes. <laughs> Let the chef send you on adventures. <laughs> yeah, uh, our, the uh, the, ex the the chef of the Exploration Society likes to send our Exploration Society members on adventures for ingredients. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. So I I think let me check the green room real quick. It looks like our first guest is ready. Perfect, uh Rich, perfect. are you ready? Of course. All right. Well, of in that course. case, well, let's let's toss it over to uh Hey there. Hello, hello. How are you? <laughs> I'm I'm extremely well and I'm extremely happy that you all uh asked me to be on here today. Well, welcome to Albert Soup. Uh of course, uh you are the famed game designer Tracy Barnett. Um, oh my gosh, I'm so excited! I've been just just going wild looking at uh, your tweets about you are the dungeon for the last. Um, gosh, it feels like a long time. Um, but leading up to a Kickstarter launch, um, mm -hmm. which is very close, May 11th. Yeah, yeah, uh, two weeks and two days, so 16 days. I can, I can. I'm a game designer. I can do basic math. <laughs> I'm launching a Kickstarter very soon as well, and I don't have that deadline down. I don't have that timeline in my brain yet. Um, <laughs> <need> the days. <laughs> very cool. Well, I am so excited to talk about this and just talk about you and the kind of games that you design. And then, of course, we're going to be uh, showing off some "You Are the Dungeon" today as well. Yeah, we're gonna uh, we're gonna speed run it. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's very exciting. Um, so, I guess to, to kind of get started, like "You Are the Dungeon" is is. Oh gosh, emblematic. I'm going to say emblematic of of uh, an indie RPG design space. That's I, I feel like a lot of people, if they are used to stuff like D and D, um, you know, Shadowrun, Rift, stuff like that, don't get exposed to it. And they don't see it as often. Um, so I, I want to just hear real real quick, like what's what? How do you feel when when someone plays these games? What are you hoping that they feel that they take away? So you are the dungeon in particular. I want you to feel like a brutal malevolent malicious evil dungeon <laughs> uh the the, yes. the whole idea is you i mean it's literally on the tin you are the dungeon you are playing a semi-sentient uh growing dungeon that tempts adventurers in to uh you know to gain riches and glory and most of them don't make it out alive and you survive. You are there in this game. There is no way for the dungeon to ever be defeated. Uh, sure. Think like uh, Darkest Dungeon. The video game is a big inspiration for this. Uh, mm -hmm. And then also classic adventures um, like the Caves of Chaos. I think we mentioned before we were we we're going on here uh -huh. that there are just things, just monsters throughout this entire complex. And it literally, if you try and think about why they may all be there, there's no connective tissue at all. So this game <laughs> yeah. lets you build a dungeon and a history for a place that, you know, things will make sense. You know why this, all this stuff is happening. So it's a solo journaling game by its nature. You can just play it on your own with a, a D10 and, and a deck of tarot cards. Uh, but you can also play it as a group and you could drop it into an existing campaign setting, you know, whatever, whatever you would like to do. So yeah, it's, um, it's, it's a lot of fun. I originally designed it back in November. Uh, I've changed the layout to a different format because I'm going to be doing a print zine with a Kickstarter oh, and great, I'm great. adding some, some extra guidance uh, for doing other genres. Uh, if you want to do like a, a, a space Hulk type thing where the, the spaceship mm -hmm. keeps attracting you know, like new ships crash into it and suddenly there's a new evil to, to explore so on and so forth um you know okay, incorporating cool. it into your existing game and also playing as a group so yeah. that's what's coming on may 11th that sounds fantastic that's really exciting um i just i just i want so many game experiences so this is so great um well uh do you want to should we jump in i mean how how sure yeah are let's ready uh, to do this <laughs> i i'm ready to do this so what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to play uh as much you or the dungeon as we can get to uh in okay. the in the time we have for this particular uh this particular setup and justin if you could pop a uh, slide one up onto the screen for everyone this is a google uh presentation that i use to play this game remotely so rich here is how we start what is your original form okay. of the dungeon like how Ooh. did how did it start I love this as a starting space. Okay, so we are, um, gosh, I kind of like the chaotic warehouse, right? Okay. Um, it was so almost a, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're just going to go warehouse. The beginning of this, we keep it pretty simple, right? We're not looking okay, to sure. add a ton of details right now because we're going to flesh a lot of this out over technically multiple iterations of play. 
but gotcha, gotcha. for our purposes today, uh, who yeah. was responsible for your creation? Who built the warehouse? Ooh, um, let's see. We need a, I, in my brain, I've got a warehouse 13 start. So some kind of like a shadowy, um, uh, shadowy force of guards, let's say. <laughs> okay. Uh, how about we just call them the syndicate? Ooh, I'm in. <laughs> Great. The syndicate made it. Uh, what evil took root in your heart? Ah, uh, this is the inception I mean, we, of the dungeon. Right. I feel like, you know, we, we could do something like one of the artifacts. Oh, no. Um, but I actually think think there is some malevolent force in the center of the or that kind of maybe took over the syndicate. Right. OK. Um, some some being some force. Um, the, the collector. Right. That's the what's collector. going on here. The collector. Wonderful. I love it. And <laughs> what foul being first heeded the call of your curse? This is like the monster at the center of the dungeon. Now that now that the warehouse is decrepit and is this place of mystery, what's the thing that that first attracts uh, attracts adventurers? Okay, we we have brought here right to so this gathering of shiny objects, and when the call went out, I think this this hulking tengu, like this this monstrous crow creature, came like wandering through the warehouse and made a nest here. <laughs> the corrupted tengu. Yes. <laughs> uh, fantastic, uh, Justin. If you can flip to slide two, uh, the game includes a little bit of graph paper, and you get to. I'm just going to do this real quick so people can see. Um, shapes there we yeah. go you just draw a basic uh structure and we're just going to keep this simple and label this the warehouse right you don't need to make it too complicated for the beginning of this because as you play through multiple seasons of the game it gets expanded upon and we add rooms and we can add levels and and so on and so forth Ooh, uh, okay. yeah because you can just you, you can literally just keep playing as long as you want to Right, just bouncing uh, back yeah. between a couple of phases, right? Yep, exactly. There's a foray phase, which is what we're going to move into next. This is where the adventurers come into the dungeon for the first time. And then there is a fallow phase where you uh, attract new evil to you and you corrupt something that the adventurers <laughs> left behind. Nice. Um, yeah. So I'm going to skip the D10 roll here because, you know, we don't want to have too many adventurers running around our unhallowed depths right now. Um, sure. But uh, what do you say? Four adventures? Does that sound about right? I think four adventures sounds good, right? I'm used okay. to a good D&D party. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. So this is where the tarot deck uh, comes into play. Uh, on In the game itself, I have uh, people associated with every single tarot card uh, that, uh, that you can pull. So I'm just going to draw four tarot cards real quick. We have first great. the Ace of Cups there on camera. You get to see my beautiful tarot deck. Uh-huh. Uh, the Ace of Excellent. Cups is a prideful vintner has decided to enter the dungeon. Uh, so wh while I'm putting these uh, dispositions down here, if you want to think of names for the people, uh, Rich, then we can uh, we can run those in there. Will do. Uh, Justin, we are on slide three. Oh, yes. Thank you. <laughs> um, and somehow we drew the Two of Cups next. Oh, hey. <laughs> uh, the Two of Cups is a stalwart wanderer. And then we have the Empress. Uh, the Empress is a haughty ruler. And this is all this stuff, the all these like descriptions are callbacks to like the old school like OSR adventuring parties that would you know, be comprised of whoever oh, yeah. they could get, could get called together. Yeah. So you just get a bunch and you can have up to 13 in the adventuring party. As you can see on the list, it goes down a ways. Uh, and last we have my, uh, mine says 10 of discs, but that would be the, uh, the 10 of pentacles. Uh, so that is an impoverished guide. So we've got a vintner, a wanderer, a ruler and a guide. Seems pretty appropriate wow. to head into a dungeon. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. What uh, What do you want to name the uh, the prideful vintner? So I think the I was trying to come up with like wine label names and then one didn't come <laughs> to mind. So I've got Jasper Cabernet. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, uh, stalwart wanderer. Uh, our stalwart wanderer uh, Rowan. Um, I don't have a good last name. Um, oh, just just make him Rowan. Ro they, they, okay, they great. They, they need no surname. <laughs> uh count pascal is definitely going to be our haughty ruler here um of the area um and then the impoverished and, guide 
and our impoverished <laughs> uh, is going to be Jesse Puddles. <laughs> oh, poor Jesse. Okay. Uh, the next phase of this is there are events. Um, do you happen yes. to have a D10 handy? I do. Wonderful. Uh, <laughs> go ahead and roll a D10 for me. This is going to be some, some fiasco style tables here. Excellent. So, I've got a five. Uh, roll, roll it once. <laughs> got a five. Uh, that is Whispers from the Shadows. Uh, roll it one more time. Oh, a uh, four. A four. Um, so in the dungeon, and we don't know the context for this, right? You can write as much or as little as you want to, but the fate of Jasper Cabernet, our prideful vintner, is that he hears in the dungeon somewhere the voice of a forbidden love. Ooh. Yeah. Now go ahead and roll a d10 again. Okay. Okay. Uh, that's a seven. A seven. This is diminishing returns. Roll once more. And a, and a one. A one. Climbing a ladder for hours to have made no progress. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yep. So we get that copied in there. This is the fate of Rowan, our stalwart wanderer. Poor Rowan. Uh, once more. Okay, uh, I got a seven. All right, wow, that table really got uh, formatted badly when I did that, didn't it? <laughs> uh, let's just reduce that font size down. No progress. No progress. Okay, uh, a seven again. That's the same table we were just on, diminishing returns, right. which is fine. Go ahead and roll, uh, roll one more. I got a three. A three. Swimming a vile moat to find themselves where they started. Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, oh. This is yeah. That's the fate this of Count perfect. Pascal. Yeah. <laughs> it, okay. It, there's some lovely uh, synchronicity that tends to happen uh, with all of these. Um, I, I love that in my brain it was this endless warehouse, right? The, the, mm -hmm. <laughs> and now here we are, like running in circles. Uh, exactly. Uh, and um, uh, roll 10 for our last category. I've got a nine and then a one. A glorious tree with golden leaves. Ooh. So the... Uh, nice some Jesse of, Puddles. <laughs> yeah. See, uh, some of these things don't sound uh horrible right um but the context is that this is a a horrible heinous awful dungeon so imagine going through all these things having seen these things happen to your other companions and then you see a a, a glorious tree with golden leaves like right. is it a boon is it for you is it forbidden it's you know the the Im implication I is is what makes this game run I love this as a, a place like just to rest. Just finally, I'm going to take a break. I'm going to stop and then uh, never wake up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, go ahead and roll the die one more time. One last time. All right. Yes. That is an eight. Eight. So that digit goes in the tens place with a zero to follow it. That is the percentage of the original party that survived the excursion. So 80% <laughs> of four, four times wow. point oh times 0. 0.8 is whoop, four times 0. 0.8 3.2 so okay. that means someone everyone made it out but someone effectively only has 20 percent of themselves left. sure i yeah okay um right and and there's no place to note this down necessarily if you mm -hmm. want to journal more right you can write a whole story about what happens uh, to everybody i've I've seen people do that on Twitter. It's it's quite fun. Um, I mean, with but, these four prompts, that's that seems great. Like thinking about which one of these, dra you know, which one of them is being dragged out, all, almost dead. <laughs> I I think I feel it's like great. Jasper Cabernet is like hollowed out inside. I think so. I think that is a really good one. Uh, whether that forbidden love is like the uh, uh, <laughs> the intelligent cask of wine that will not be taken, or. Mm -hmm. Or something, or just this voice that just keeps calling. Yeah, the other one I think is the tree, you know, our guide. I think one mm -hmm. of them is definitely losing a major part of their soul in this endeavor. Yeah, for, for sure. And whichever one it is, we, we can leave it up to uh, to the story to decide. Um, but as we're getting to the end of the segment here, we're going to head to our fallow section and expand right. the dungeon with some more questions. Um, so what bright thing was left by the adventurers? Um, and this is slide four, Justin. Uh, my goodness. Uh, I think, I mean, can we say a vintner's soul? <laughs> we 100% can. All right. Um, how have you turned its brightness into corrupting shadow? 
Oh gosh, it was a it was a big beacon of creativity before, but I think its knowledge is going to be used uh, to make this place very like uh, acidic. Let's bring forth the the acid of wine. <laughs> uh, let's turn that into a a series of traps. <laughs> and now you know why traps. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, in the years, I decided yes, <laughs> exactly. Uh, in the years since the adventurers. Who or what has taken up residence in your desperate passages? Ooh, um, let's see. Let's uh, let's get our Tengu some friends. I think uh, mm -hmm. right. Um, let's get a series of like you know it's getting darker in here. Let's get some like stone methods, basically some sort of oh, like yeah. spirits of of uh, stone and darkness in here. Yeah. Awesome. And last but definitely not least, what did the new resident add to your structure? And what price did you extract from them? Oh my gosh. Well, I mean, I think they get to keep a little bit more of their soul than the Vintner did, but, uh, mm -hmm. but certainly a, a little, at least a year of their lives, I think, is going to be added to our Tengu at the heart of this maze. Um, and I think that they had to work specifically to, to build out more of the maze-like structures underneath the place. Um, All right, excellent. So, uh... On the dungeon then, since we now have the warehouse, I'm going to, on this, uh, duplicate the slide. And uh, Justin, if you would pop to now slide three, uh, we now have the dungeon level two. Oh. Right? <laughs> this is yes. how dungeons get levels, kids. Um, and we'll keep this gray box up here, but then I will take and make another box that runs below it. And we will send that to the back. Send it back. And we won't draw it all in now, but you can imagine that that big gray space is now a labyrinth underneath mm -hmm. the dungeon, underneath the original warehouse level. Oh, hollowed out by these methods. Oh, this is oh, wonderful. This is, this is right. the best. <laughs> yeah, so so that's that is the that's the very quick version of this, right? Obviously, you can take a whole lot more time if you're playing at home and really dig into the story of all of this. But yeah. if you are in need of one, a fun game to play by yourself, or two, something to insert into your own game where you need a dungeon and you want to have some reasoning behind it, you can just play multiple rounds of this, and suddenly you have a space with residents and threats, and you know why. Yeah. So I love that. I, you know, I also love it as a creative writing uh, exercise, right? You know, if mm -hmm. what I want to do is write a story of adventurers heading into a dungeon, like just build the whole thing first and have all this history and all this lore. It's, it's fantastic. This is a really cool way to, to populate and like make a, a, make a dungeon legendary, right? Yeah, I don't know why the dungeon the... of the mad mage is super cool, but I'll know why this is super cool. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Because you've, you've built the story of it. Uh, so yeah, uh, Rich, we are the dungeon now. <laughs> thank you thank you you're for welcome. letting me be part of this uh well i'm so excited like we said at the start your your kickstarter goes live on may 11th mm -hmm. uh people can uh can already get in there uh they should probably f could check that out uh on your twitter at the the other tracy mm -hmm. or yep. uh uh do you have a link to that on your website your personal website uh you can actually go to you are the dungeon.com you are a genius <laughs> i i, I snagged the domain baby <laughs> Good work, good work. That is fantastic. Well, this is really exciting, and I'm excited to uh, to do some more dungeoneering with you in a little bit. Yeah. Once we uh, we all join up at the end, um, we'll see you in a bit. We're gonna swing it back over to to Justin and our next guest, uh, the wonderful Dr. Jess. Hello, uh, I am here with the fantastic Dr. Dr. Jessica Hebert, PhD. Um, and I have known Jess, uh, I've known Dr. Jess for uh, what 12 years now or so, uh, through dressing up like pirates and uh, singing shanties and uh, you know, all, all those, all those other fun things that that folks like to do. And um, yeah, let's see here, what else do I have to say? I have to say, Jess's mic seems to be muted still, and um, then now I'm it's not. Now it's not. There we go. Uh, there you go. <laughs> so a couple other quick things about Jessica. She's a part of a, an amazing band called the PDX Broadsides. Uh, they sing uh, music, folk music. That's funny. And I don't. I, you know, I'm I'm so bad at describing these bands, I, and I should be better. 
seeing who I'm married to. But uh, welcome to the we show, call- Jess. Thank you. We call <laughs> ourselves like nerd folk pop about fandoms and feelings and butts, you know, th- yeah. like normal music, totally normal. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, hi. Yeah, I'm, I'm Dr. Jess, uh, Dr. Jessica Hebert. I am uh, my PhD is in biology. I'm a postdoctoral research fellow at Oregon Health and Science University in Portland, Oregon. Anything I have to say is not legal medical advice, nor is it a reflection of my employers. That being said, let me give you the tea. <laughs> about getting together with people during the age of the pandemic. Exactly. Yeah. And that's, that's exactly why I brought you on. Um, you know, I've been talking a lot about conventions. I've been talking about a lot about getting together gaming. Um, I've, I, I reached the end of my two week vaccination waiting period tomorrow. So I will be fully vaccinated and, and, and ready to party within limits. And, uh, yeah, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about those limits. So, uh, yeah, like, like, how do we know when it's safe? How do we how do we get safe? How do we game again? I I have so many questions. Man, it's that there's there are a lot of questions for scientists too. Mm-hmm. So I will say first of all, let's talk about how how we've been staying safe and how that needs to be continuing forward. So everybody knows, get vaccinated. Getting Mm -hmm. vaccinated is great. If you want to hang out with your friends, getting vaccinated is the number one thing that the CDC says needs to happen. Um, Number two, stay masked when you are out and about, or even with your, when you're with people who aren't vaccinated. Um, If you're outside, it's okay to have your mask off, but I think of wearing a mask outside, like having your brights on when you're mm-hmm. driving down a highway, like you can have, a, when you see somebody else coming, like you turn your brights off, right? So you pull your mask up to keep other people safe. And then you can pull your mask back down when you're not crossing paths with someone or if you're not in a very populated area. And number three, of course, is keeping distance because the way that COVID primarily spreads is through breath, through respiration. So if I am right next to you and we haven't been vaccinated and I breathe on you, there's a a chance that you could catch it if I'm contagious. And it's hard to tell who has it and who doesn't because COVID can often be asymptomatic, which means you have it, but you don't show any of the symptoms of having it. You're like, I don't have a dry cough. I, I, I feel perfectly fine. And then you go to a wedding with 300 people and a bunch of people get sick and your grandma dies. So how about we don't do that? How about we try to continue to be really safe? So getting vaccinated is great. I'm very happy for you. So Um, with the vaccinations, you know, people are, people are getting these vaccinations. Um, It doesn't sound like that is a free pass to go and make out with your neighbors. Um, (laughs) I mean, no kink shaming, but yeah, uh, maybe, maybe you should hold off on that just a minute. (laughs) Um, And I guess, I guess my question is uh, I've been vaccinated. Uh, Some of my friends have been vaccinated. It maybe I, I don't know for sure, but I think you've been vaccinated seeing as you're you're working at the hospital. Uh, when is it when is it time for for us to get together and play tiny t- tiny towns around a table? Um, I've been very fortunate in that I received my second dose in January. Uh, mm-hmm. and so I've been using that privilege to talk about um, how to get the vaccine and helping hook people up with that. When is it going to be safe to get around a table with a small group? Um, This is actually something that one of my D&D campaigns have been talking about because I joined them during the pandemic. I haven't met most of them face to face yet, and we all live in Portland. So this is going to be really exciting to be able to get together. And what we're waiting for is everybody in our circle to be vaccinated and like all of us who would sit around the table and anybody who is in our bubble to be vaccinated. And the reason for that is um, because people can be asymptomatic, it's possible that you can contract it. And even if you've been vaccinated, roll a D20. If you roll a one, that's the same as your chance as getting COVID if you've been vaccinated. It's a 5% chance. Okay. So if you if you think about how often you roll ones at the table, if you're me all the time, uh, then you know, that's your your chance of being vaccinated, but still being a carrier. Mm-hmm. And vaccinated folks tend to be 
asymptomatic or have very mild symptoms, that's the joy of the vaccine. You're not going to get severe or um, hospitalized levels of um, COVID reaction, but you could still spread it to somebody else who could be get very, very sick from it. Okay. So we're being incredibly careful about small groups. Um, if you want to have friends over who are vaccinated and it's safe, I still advise try to meet outside. Uh, the weather is starting to warm up and get beautiful here in the northern hemisphere. So try to do things on porches or out in parks with distance and mm -hmm. don't go places that are super crowded. So you don't go places super crowded. So um, if so, I shouldn't go to that big convention next week. I should wait until, uh, like, you know, and, and, and this is one of the issues that we're going to be fighting with here in the U.S. is, is at what percentage of, of vaccinations is it okay for me to go back to a con? And B, will we ever hit that here in the States? I think more than even uh, percentage, let's talk about the percentage vaccination first. So yeah. you, uh, it is considered a disease under control if at least 95% of your population has been vaccinated and you have less than one case per, I think it's one case per month in a particular area. So we're nowhere near that. Uh, mm -hmm. We also have a measurement of how, how far, how, how catchable a virus is. It's called an R naught. Um, at, N-A-U-G-H-T, not N-O-T, R-naught. Um, so for every, if you say there's an R-naught of one, it means for every one person who gets COVID, I could spread it to one other person on average. Mm -hmm. um, the R-naught of the most contagious disease that we know of is measles. And the R-naught of that is between 12 and 18. Um, so for every one person who gets the measles, 12 to 18 people can uh, contract it if they haven't been vaccinated. Um, the r naught of COVID is between three and five. It's high. The yeah. r naught of the 1918 pandemic was under two. So that wow. should give you a pretty good idea of how contagious it is. And because we do have um people gathering in groups and there wasn't a whole lot known about it we do have the uh mutant strains that the news likes to go and now we have a double mutant and it all that means is that two amino acids change instead of one this happens with viruses all the time it's nothing to be more freaked out about than one mutation but some of those strains like the one that's in brazil right now they have a much higher r naught um, because mm -hmm. they interact with the cells in a way that makes it easier to get inside. So, yeah, we still have to be really careful. I would not go to, I don't know, a convention of 80,000 plus people where everyone travels in very small corridors from one building to another mm -hmm. and people don't always sleep right or take care of themselves or wash. Uh, mm -hmm. I would not go to that convention right. this year. Yeah. And it kills me to say that because I miss cons. I miss getting to play games and play music. But yeah. we have to stay alive for the next one, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, and I and, and and maybe maybe there isn't a good answer to this. But for, you know, we have we have a lot of the same friends who who their livelihood depends on going to these some of these cons. And now that they're coming back, you know, that's that's an opportunity for them to make up some of the lost money that they've lost this past year how would those people do the best they could to stay safe in that situation is is it even possible like should they just go okay well if i'm going i'm just totally throwing you know caution to the wind or or is there a way to be as safe as possible in that situation sure uh, i think the rules that apply to con attendance even before covid wash your hands carry hand sanitizer, don't touch things and then touch your face. This is how you get, we've talked about con crud for years, mm -hmm. you know. Oh, yeah. Have you ever come back from somewhere sick as, as heck from a convention? Yep. <laughs> Everybody, I get, I would get it from Rose City Comic Con every year. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I probably shouldn't say that out loud. I'm sorry, you're not <laughs> diseased, Rose City, you're great. It's not just uh, that con, it's all of them. 
Sure. Um, I had friends who would go to like Dragon Con and every year come back sick and just call it the Dragon Con crud. Mm -hmm. Um, you can't, you can't emphasize enough the importance of washing your hands, like keeping your distance, um, getting enough sleep, getting enough nutrition. Um, because the moment you don't sleep enough or you aren't eating enough, your immune system gets knocked down and then you're at an extra danger to contract it. Um, in the age of COVID, we do have to take extra precautions. So if a convention were to say, have glass partitions up or extra distance between the stage and the audience, and that could be enforced and maintained, um, those things might help make a place safer. Uh, limiting attendance at cons, uh, smaller cons may be safer than bigger cons, but you also have to realize that smaller cons, people are more likely to know one another. So they're mm -hmm. all going to want to hug and then distance kind of goes out the window. Um, I think that is up to each person to decide. Uh, so for instance, uh, my band, The Broadsides, as much as we would love to go to some bigger cons, we are still we had our first in-person rehearsal together since the pandemic began on Tuesday. Yeah. 14 months. We weren't in the same room. Uh, we are going to be able to start doing concerts together and then live streaming them to, uh, we have key con next month. Uh, we're mm -hmm. going to be doing a couple of other cons throughout the summer, but we're still planning on attending virtually, even though now we can be together and doing it that way. Cause it's just, it's still the safest way to go until we get that R not down. We get enough people vaccinated. Um, but yeah, if for some reason an area that would have a really big con suddenly has zero hospitalizations and less than five new cases a week, um, and most of the population is vaccinated, I would feel comfortable going to that con while masked. Okay. No problem. But I don't see that happening before the end of 2021. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, Jess or Dr. Jess, it's fun to call you. It's, it's, it. it's fun to call you Dr. Jess. Um, we're 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 in doctor mode. We're not in we're not in a uh, hanging out at geeky conventions mode. Um, yeah. and I it, it's and it th th this all this all sounds sounds a little bleak, but we're all getting vaccinated. So, um, I guess I guess uh, what is the the light at the end of the tunnel for us? Is it is it is it that these vaccines are getting into people's arms? I don't know. The light at the end of the tunnel is an oncoming train and you should run. Yeah. Uh, it's, <laughs> no, uh, it, the light at the end of the tunnel is that people are getting vaccinated. That's huge. We're seeing um, people representing groups that would traditionally be not amenable to getting vaccinated. Uh, certain pockets of areas that are anti-vaccination, like they're realizing how important this is. Mm -hmm. So we're starting to see the numbers go up and that's great. Um, the people can start to hang out in small groups. If you've been vaccinated, the CDC rec uh, recommendations currently say, if like I'm vaccinated and you're vaccinated and it's been two weeks after our second dose, we could hang out inside. Yep. They say that's safe. I think as long as you're doing very small groups, it's fine. Don't have a house party of 45 people. You can't trust everybody's bubbles. Um, but, you know, limited small groups, we can do that again. And we could not do that 12 months ago. Um, we are getting to the point where the CDC now says that traveling, as long as you are masked and doing it, uh, in a smart fashion, traveling can con be considered moderately safe within the continental U.S. now. So, yeah, we're we're getting there, and yeah. as long as we just keep getting shots in arms, and the best shot to get is the one that's in your arm. Fight me. Uh, it don't don't shop for your favorite vaccine. Pfizer is as good as Moderna, is as good as Johnson and Johnson, which um, had its restrictions lifted on Friday by the mm -hmm. way, if you hadn't heard yet. So um, it's it's back out there and it's one shot. I think that's, it's going to be easier to get that to people who are a little bit more resistant or needle phobic. That's yeah. totally a thing. 
I was very fortunate and I got the Johnson and Johnson and I, I, I thought it was the limited edition, but, but apparently it's, <laughs> it's, it's like, uh, you know, it's like new Coke, it's coming back. It's coming back. And I, <laughs> the, the concerns were, were warranted and then they investigated and I, I, I would feel perfectly safe having anybody I know get any of the vaccines mm -hmm. and that's, that's what we got to do right now. Stay, stay safe, stay masked, stay di distant, and I want you to stay alive so that we can continue to hang out next year. Yeah. Well, thank you, Dr. Jess, for coming on and talking all sciencey. Next time you come on, we'll have to talk all different kind of nerdy. Um, you can I'll always talk both. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can find uh, Jess's band, the PDX Broadsides, at thepdxbroadsides.com. They do have a show coming up, um, and that was for KeyCon. That's going to be yeah. the fourth weekend of May. Check it out. And uh, Dr. Jess, is there anywhere else people can find you and get any more information about you? Uh, the PDX Broadsides music is sold on all platforms where great music and some mediocre stuff is. And uh, you can find me most frequently tweeting about nerdery and science and placentas. I'm at Dame underscore DNA on Twitter. All right. And that's in the chat. So let's go ahead and jump to the next thing where we are going to delve into some adventure building and i believe i believe this week we get all four guests all right uh oh i'm going to <laughs> fix this so here we are i have our dungeon up <laughs> we didn't need our, a, a double vision of us um that was good though it was nice <laughs> yeah. us looking at us <laughs> well we are we are the prettiest all right, so uh, Rich, uh, uh, Tracy, I think you guys started this dungeon. Let's let's dive into to I don't know, fleshing it out, figuring out why we would send our adventurers there. Um, oh and just a quick reminder: Exploration Society, make sure to join our Patreon. Uh, it's um, time is running out to get your your special pins for being a initial backer. Uh, and everyone should join the Adventure Society or the Exploration Society. So Chef Albert D can send you <laughs> off on these adventures to the warehouse dungeon, uh, right? Where where we have a a, a a quite the cast of characters in there. Oh so. my goodness! Oh, I'm so excited. I don't even know where to where to go. We just had so many ideas. It's been a big half hour. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but let's 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 start it out. Let's um, let's see. We we got a couple options, right? As we're building this encounter or this adventure, I mean, we could continue to like flesh out dungeon ideas, make it bigger, more dramatic, or we can start thinking about the story of people coming and investigating. What's a what sounds good? Well, let's see. I, we depending on how much you want to lean on the mechanics of the game that we played, we're prepared to do another foray and actually get adventurers so we mm -hmm. could come up with their dispositions and their names and then figure out why it is that they have come <laughs> to do this this is excellent i love it let's do this okay fantastic what a good framework <laughs> thanks uh, yeah so i'm gonna i'll duplicate that slide so justin if you would bump to slide now five and we'll call this foray two uh we'll keep it just four i think if that sounds all right again just so we're not uh yeah. dealing with with a bunch of different names here and let me get everything cleared off uh dr jess by the way everybody loves your paintings <laughs> oh, thanks. oh yeah i saw that <laughs> uh yeah these it's my my regrowing wall of um science communicators but these are my two uh they're they're part of the holy trinity of science communication for me so uh i've got carl sagan and Bill Nye, um, yeah, and I, I think that for me, Rosalind Franklin is mm -hmm. the the third point of that. Even though she wasn't a science communicator, she's been a huge inspiration to my science communication journey. So uh, Christopher Herndon made these, and fantastic artist. Go get his work. <laughs> Very chat, nice. Chat. <laughs> All right. So we have, for our adventurers, we have the world, uh, which is a contemplative paladin. Oh. 
uh, we have the Four of Pentacles, which is uh, a conservative kennel worker. Okay. Uh huh. <laughs> we have the Six of Swords, um, who is Six of Swords is a shadowy hunter. And then lastly, we have the Four of Wands, who is a gracious cowherd. <laughs> Great. <laughs> so why I, w- this is a motley crew. <laughs> why did they all come together? <laughs> wow. I Okay, so I have a question. <laughs> <laughs> Just one? <laughs> a, cow, a, cow, a cow herd? Like mm-hmm. a herd of cows? Or is that short uh, for someone who herds cows? Uh, that is shorthand for someone who herds cows, at least in the original writing. However, the author is dead. You can make it to be whatever you would like. No, I love it. I love it. I love it. It's a cow herd. <laughs> I, I'm, 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 I'm picturing like, you know, like six cows in a uh, jumpsuit or something, in, right? In a very, very large trench coat. Oh, I see. Yeah. I see where you're at now. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I, no, the kennel worker. Yeah, no, that one didn't bother me at all. <laughs> Someone mentioned that in the chat. It's like, no, kennel worker. Yeah. No, I. Well, that makes sense because you have the kennel worker and the shadowy hunter. Well, mm-hmm. where's the shadowy hunter going to get uh, his hunting dogs? Yeah, exactly. Her hunting dogs. <laughs> uh, and I think maybe if it's all right with you, with everyone here, the chat could uh, think of some names for these folks uh, yeah. while we're talking about their motivations. All right, chat, get to work on some great names for our uh, <laughs> herd of cows. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I've heard of cows. Yeah. <laughs> the shadowy hunter's got to have something to hunt. And so maybe this herd of cows is actually a group of, like, thieving bandits. I like the idea <laughs> of a bunch of cows in a, a cow suit now walking into a bank and holding a stick up. I mean, oh, my gosh. <laughs> what if the shadowy hunter is trying to find these cows? He just can't right? find them. He yeah. just can't. I'm, like, I'm, I'm, just master- a, I'm just a person. <laughs> the cows are masters of disguise. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Captain Cowherd. The cowherd. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> um, so I like that pairing. That's fantastic. Um, I, I always love a, like, a, a contemplative paladin. Like I'm, I'm going in. I'll fight some stuff. I'll smite some things. But first, like, uh, I'm gonna write a poem. All right. <laughs> well, so it's been it's been a few years since the previous group was in here, right? Mm-hmm. What if the the cow herd like did commit some kind of crime and ran to the dungeon, and the the lord from the previous uh, one, uh, Count Pascal, yes. uh, ordered a, a party to go after them, but secretly told like the shadowy hunter to uh, take down the Tengu, like as the actual point of the mission. Oh, I love okay. it. Mm-hmm. That sounds good. Um, you know, and hey, by the way, if you're there and you find 80% of a soul or something, like let us know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that the Vintner has been in a bad way for a while now. Yeah. The wine sucks. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh. Okay, that's fantastic. Uh, Bree cheatered. Very good. <laughs> um, who is that going to be? Uh, who should be our cheesy friend here? The yeah, Aubrey, did you have a... Oh, you want to put the kennel worker there? Oh, yeah, that sounds great. Yeah. There we go. Bree Peter is the kennel worker. All right. Um, oh, gosh. Uh, why do I have like Fauntleroy stuck in my head for this contemplative <laughs> paladin? But I don't have a good first name to go with that. You kind of, I feel like it needs one. <laughs> uh, Brass Fauntleroy. Brass Fauntleroy. <laughs> I love it. It's very Zap Brannigan. Like it's got that. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. Brass Fauntleroy. <laughs> uh, which means, oh, oh, oh wait, they're a lawyer too. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Uh, and then I love dungeon. this. Our, our shadowy hunter, Dark Edge Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Loopy Bobo too. Thank you very much. Uh, His deep or, secret is that he's he's really not that dark or edgy. He's he's just you know drawn that way. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> Oh, I see what's going on there, Justin. All right, I'm making a mess of the screen. Don't mind me. 
Uh -oh. <laughs> just trying to get some dice on here. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know where that one is. I, oh, I love I this, this live scene building. It's great. All right, so so these four are coming in on on this adventure, right? They're searching specifically to beat the Tengu at the heart of this this dungeon, this warehouse. Mm -hmm. um, along the way, they might have gotten some you know mini quests from other members, like the the vintner looking for part of their soul back. Um, the uh, the shadowy hunter also is trying to hunt down this herd of cows, but just can't find them. Uh, that sounds good. It's a good start. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and, uh, and the way we have the dungeon set up right now is it begins as this infinite warehouse style place. Um, and then there is a labyrinth beneath it. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. Okay. Um, so perfect. Where, uh, let's see. Um, we've got a great start, I think. Let's go, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Lord Pascal saying, get out there, find that Tengu. I mean, of course, that's what's going to happen at this point in this dungeon story. <laughs> it's small. It's only eaten a soul in a little bit, you know? <laughs> Easy to beat still. That's right. Um, so what kind of things could we put into this uh, uh, this warehouse layer, I suppose? I mean, I mentioned some stone methods earlier, but it could be anything. Uh, I, I like stone methods. Okay. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I also I, I like the idea that the labyrinth, if it was made by the stone methods, they've got wings. They can fly. This mm -hmm. isn't a, a two dimensional labyrinth, right? It's not oh, like no. you know Perseus and the or and the Minotaur, right? It's it is it's almost like a beholder's labyrinth. Like it goes up and around, and the tunnels twist all over the place. So you'd have to like have rope and like you know grapnels and climb up parts, and then hit a dead end, and then you fall down ten feet and. Like it would, it would be brutal. It would, yeah. I, I mean, running it would be an absolute pain in the ass. But yeah. you know, um, for fictional purposes, it's great. <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah. That's wow. I um, like the three D aspect of of the dungeon because then you can have rooms where you would need to get creative to cross it, pit traps, um, or you you're like, I'll just cast a fly spell, but the area up above might be electrified, so you've got a very thin space oh. to thread the needle through oh I, I i bet there are spots where there's acid dripping down right because of yeah. the, the vent because the vintner's soul there you go. <laughs> so uh, what, what jess was describing i did you guys ever play that old ninja turtle game on nes where there was a swimming level and you had to stay yes. between the electrified oh. coral oh it's so hard <laughs> All right, I'm glad every, uh, everyone had a, a a groan at remembering how hard that was. <laughs> I recall that's the level that splits the game into the part people see and the part you don't see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is that one of those? Uh -huh. A lot of those games had the level I never beat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was the level. Because then after that, you finally got the uh, turtle van, and uh, then nobody knows how to beat it from there. <laughs> <laughs> You set up a room like that, though, where you have to kind of thread the needle tightly, and one of two it. things are going to happen. Uh, one, there's going to be a great reward at the other end, or two, your players are going to be so obsessed with that one room that uh -huh. they're going to spend three sessions there, and you're going to have a TPK just trying <laughs> to get it through. Yeah. Absolutely. Either way, it's a good it's mm -hmm. a good time. I love so. it. I love it. And 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 using our 2D20 rules, maybe that would be like a three successes <laughs> that you have to get in order to do it. So it's just out of your normal reach and you have to use a little bit more gusto to do it. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> that that is that is one hell of a callback. That's very good integration. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. I, I really like this. I, I love the idea that the stone methods have also like taken some of the stuff from the warehouse and hidden it throughout their labyrinth. So there are these treasures all over the place now because that's how the whole place started, right? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, that's good. All right. Well, I got our dice roller up. Is it is it time to roll dice? I just like rolling dice. Yeah. Do you think our fates would tell us a little bit more about what else is in this dungeon? Should we do a... Yeah, let's, let's, let's go for it. So... Um... Justin, you get the honors this time. Let's right. uh, let's have a, a a couple d10s. Give me the individual results. All right. So I just rolled a five, and right. uh, let's see here. And I rolled a six. Okay, that is whispers from the shadows, and for Brass Fauntleroy Esquire, uh, their fate. 
Uh huh. Uh huh. Yep. It's fun. To, uh-huh. It's fun to hear, isn't it? Um, it is. Uh, a demonic laugh. <laughs> is this an evil laugh? <laughs> <laughs> what What if it's something that like Brass sees and he just suddenly it's like Tasha's hideous laughter, like it's his demonic laugh. Oh. Again, that's that's how it sounds from now on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh. Leroy's demonic laugh. Oh. A demonic laugh, comma his. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh wow! Tries for the rest of his life not to contemplate funny things. Oh, mm-hmm. oh. <laughs> oh, that sadness. Uh, Justin, go ahead and roll uh, the the two tens again, please. Oh, actually, I think Jess grabbed some dice. Oh, Why don't Jess, you give us a roll? It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sure, I'd be happy to. Uh, shiny math rocks, go. Yes. Uh, a six mm-hmm. and a five. So the top level category is Torrents of Sorrow. Mm. And, uh, oh, I think this one hurts me to think about. Uh, it is leaping into a pit full of spiked reeds. Uh, Oof. <laughs> that's, uh, I mm-hmm. do not like. That's yeah, uncomfortable. No, it is. <laughs> that is really appropriate for Bree Cheatered, who was always meant to be speared by small toothpicks. Oh, that's true. <laughs> that's, mm. that's very appropriate. <laughs> oh, Jess, that was beautiful. <laughs> can, can 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 we roll back for just a second? Sure. Uh, shiny math rocks is mm-hmm. the best thing I've heard dice called in a long time. Oh, bless! <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I got excited about them. They're they're great. <laughs> I love dice rollers online, like, and they're they're great for when you have limited space. But when right. when I can, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So, leaping into a pit of spiked reeds. Mm-hmm. I have so many traps in this place. I really I... enjoy it. <laughs> okay. All right. So, uh, let's let's see what Dark Edgelord's up oh. to, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Dark Edgelord. What are you up to, Marzipan? All right. Is Marzipan let's go, gonna roll? Let's go with a five. and <laughs> We'll make Marzipan roll next. A five and a okay. two. <laughs> okay. Oh my. Uh, this is Whispers from the Shadows again. And Dark Edge Lord hears the final breath of a dying child. <gasps> oh, brutal. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> sometimes I forget that I wrote this stuff. Did the same thing. <laughs> oh. I was thinking, comma, his. And. Just... <laughs> Let's see. Let's reduce the font oh. size a little bit there. And it's so terrible. it is. Oh my um, it's also like that exact thing is that's like, like one of those fictional connections that just makes it more poignant and horrible. Yeah. Uh, so thank you for that. Actually, Jess, that's, it, that's a good <laughs> fictional touch. I'm, I'm a little uncomfortable inside, but it's a good touch. <laughs> I think Rich and I had this, the, the same thought at the same moment. It would just yeah. like, comma his oh. and it was just this this dark like oh no <laughs> and like it's entirely possible that dark edge lord doesn't actually have kids but like right. now there's this imagined future where he just knew that he heard his child die like Oof. Ah. Right. Oof. right that's i mean that's that's fodder for for a really cool horror short story there just mm-hmm. all in just w- that one role i'm like oh man i hate it <laughs> i love it but i hate it wow. jess why don't, you, why don't you do the uh the honors uh here and roll, okay. roll the last one sure yeah, do it up here we go uh two and six okay two is delights from the ruins Ooh. and six is the caress of a tempting beauty oh oh the cow herd he's getting pets <laughs> yeah, in the dungeon. <laughs> this is not kink shamey. This is not that kind of dungeon. Is the thing? Is so? Okay. Is is is? Are they like? Is there a hallway like with a bunch of like rubber arms like sticking out of it, and it's just a little <laughs> narrow? And so as they walk through, they're just like a hallway of pets. Oh, I oh man, <laughs> with I jellyfish think... venom on the ends. <laughs> <laughs> like the 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 pit of all the hands from the labyrinth yeah but like oh. an, but but like a hallway you have to walk through so there's just hands like stone hands just like grasping at you the whole yeah. time and they oh. they all have fantastic nail polish yeah that's yeah. the tempting beauty 
<laughs> no. or gemstones in instead oh, of nails oh gemstones yeah. oh, instead yeah, of nails yeah, yeah. I love yeah. that really very good <laughs> This is really great. I had kind of envisioned this as like almost like mental, like all of this was enchantment or dream spells, but I, I love this physicality to it all. <laughs> well, and, and that's the thing. Maybe it is, but it's kind of like the matrix, right? It's real enough for them. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is great. Okay. So, <laughs> so uh, for all this stuff to happen, I mean, we, we definitely need to have some creatures in here with some pretty unique skills um mm -hmm. is, These, uh, I, I, the, yeah. the smoke methods are definitely not standard smoke methods no. right they uh they've been given some very specific instructions they, they you know they've got some engineering skills as well <laughs> mm -hmm. i feel like i want like some some like clockwork uh esque like fe uh, you know the 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 uh uncanny uh, bordering on the edge of uncanny valley type androids right so you know they're just kind of like walking around and it's just they look almost human but just so close to human that it's uncomfortable oh and like it, li you, like living statues yeah but you it, but you hear the whirrings of their of their mm -hmm. <laughs> stuff sure. yeah i oh think i think we need some of that in here is uh is the the tengu you know at the center of this is are turning into like the villain in saw is that what's going on <laughs> it kind of seems like it right like i i think whatever energies are around this place are making like portals through which it can see and communicate mm -hmm. um are the tango the ones that only repeat back things they've heard people say before in dnd terms yes yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so yeah. like can you imagine the adventurers like coming into this place and having these experiences and the Tengu listening to that and then like mimicking these things back to them <laughs> mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> and being able to mimic that demonic laugh. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, oh my yeah. gosh. Uh, Tracy this party is running out of here screaming. They're, they're, uh, yeah. they're yeah. not getting through. I, I, I have to know, does uh -huh. ever, does the, I have to know, does every dungeon get creepier and creepier? Or is this is this just just happen to be the 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 the, uh, the architect particular architects of this dungeon? Well, so so let me let me answer your question with uh, uh, just a quick read of uh, one of the categories here. Um, so th these are more of the uh, of the fates, right? So this is uh, number four, baleful curses, a flute that never stops playing, a quill that only pens the truth. Eyes in the back of their head, never feeling hungry or thirsty again, a small flame that can never be extinguished, an animal companion that never leaves their side, their touch brings the dead back to life sometimes. <laughs> Shoes that let them move twice as quickly, they now know the day they will die. They are forever the hero people, people around them want. So like, yeah, it just keeps getting worse. <laughs> <laughs> Um, be because the again, it's it's all about the context, right? The yeah. the, the dungeon is malevolent. It is, it's like um, Event Horizon, right? Mm -hmm. It's just, it's just bad. Yeah. And so even an innocuous thing in the context of this dungeon becomes horrific. Mm -hmm. And it's it's your it's your own mind filling in the gaps, um, mm -hmm. and that that is very intentional in its design. Um, cause if you just make everything just straight up horrible, it's like, okay, yeah, that's horrible. But if you think about, you know, oh uh, yeah, exactly. So Silvana plays, uh, just said the last one's pretty bad depending on how it's taken. Mm -hmm. uh, context as a game designer is my, my thing, like context matters. And so I wanted to make sure that the context for this made all of this just horrible. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Well, this is, oh my gosh, here's, here's what I'm, I'm feeling now. Like. I feel like Count Pascal is going to send the party in with like a wand of cure of uh, speak with dead or uh, a couple scrolls of it. Mm -hmm. Because some of these people didn't make it back out, but we want to hear their stories still. So, you know, you can talk to the scarred Vintner. You can talk to these people who got out the first time. But like the Count sent this group of four in and I don't really feel like all four of them are, are making it out. I feel like some of them are trapped in here to talk to. What yeah. If what if what if this count sent them in not with with uh with that but what maybe like small bags of like crackers and they have to in, in in order to get the story they have to uh tempt and bargain with the 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 tengu or the kenku depending on which edition you're 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 looking mm -hmm. at 
<laughs> and 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 because of their mimicry, they're they're able to like reproduce the story like <laughs> through the voice of those who have fallen before. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm I'm here for that. That's amazing. <laughs> well, and and the and you you've tapped into the other thing that this game is designed to do, right? That to peel back the curtain really far, the whole idea is inspired by the marketing funnel. If you if you know like basic marketing speak, that's the idea mm-hmm. that you're taking a broad group and narrowing it down to people who become true believers, and then they tell more people and so on. Mm-hmm. So the adventurers who go into this dungeon are that, right? They come out spreading the word of this dungeon and new adventurers a generation later say, well, I'm going to try my hand at that. It can't be that bad. And it's worse. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Because now the <laughs> the the Tengu has set up a bunch of magic mouth mirrors around the place, mm-hmm. well, <laughs> telling and, stories and, in all these rooms. <laughs> and Count Pascal keeps sending people out. Yeah, <laughs> right. It like be a little bit of the um, the Five E Adventure Blue Alley, where like you go in and there are pictures of the adventurers on that wall, and you know that generations have been in before you, but most of them haven't made it back out. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's so good. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> oh man. All right. Well, uh, once again, uh, it's time for us to wrap up the show. So thank you so much, Dr. Jess, for hanging out with us. Uh, Tracy, Anytime. always happy to hear from you. And thanks for bringing this fantastic game for us to play. I, I am loving this adventure. <laughs> um, nice. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much. And uh we're going to move into our wrap-up oh, section. Oh, one, oh. one quick second, I got to think. Um, before we go, uh, Tracy, because your Kickstarter is launching very quickly, right? Mm-hmm. You were doing this week of streaming events um, that I want to make sure we, we get people interested in. If you have enjoyed watching this, um, uh, where can they find even more? <laughs> uh, so I am going to be... Uh, I, I've tapped a bunch of uh, wonderful people to come onto a stream, a set of streams with me uh, on the One Shot Podcast uh, Twitch channel. So that's twitch.tv slash one shot RPG. On May 10th at 8 p.m., I'm having uh, Eleni, Gannon, and Mike from the Neo Scum podcast. On May 11th at 8 p.m., I'm having the Double Clicks. Uh, you all Ooh. might have heard of them. I, I mean, some of you might have heard of them. I don't know. <laughs> um, on May 12th at 8 p.m., Adira Slattery and Jeremy Gage are coming on. On May 12th at 10, at 10 p.m., same day, uh, two streams in one day, uh, Val and JV from Paper Book Productions. On May 13th at 8, uh, Victoria Tracy and B. Zelda from the Broadswords podcast. And on May 18th at 8 p.m., uh, Aaron and Jeff from All My Fantasy Children. So I, I tapped into a bunch of one-shot folks that I know, a uh, bunch of friends that I want to play games with and haven't seen uh, faces of in a long time. And we are going to be playing uh, It's We Are the Dungeon. So, nice. So uh, yeah. good. Yeah, so the, the the Kickstarter launches on May 11th. Um, I'll, I I may cheat a little bit and and launch it during the Neo Scum portion of the of the stream the night before. We'll Ooh. see. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. A lot of really great creative people um, who I am humbled all want to play a game with me. Uh, so yeah, fantastic. Awesome. That is very exciting. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you all again. And uh, we'll talk to you all soon, hopefully. And, uh, and, and and now we'll transition to the portion of the show in which it's just me and Rich talking again. Woo! Whoa. <laughs> oh, my God. That was... I, that, how, how are we going to keep topping these guests? I don't know. <laughs> they are, they are really so, much, so much cooler than us. Um, <laughs> and... I mean, I, I guess that's the, the bar for, 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 for guests. They just have to be that much cooler than us. Yeah, um, <laughs> uh, it's so fantastic. Um, yeah, I'm excited for the Kickstarter uh, to get started. Um, I'm so excited to get, to get to conventions at some point in the future, in the distant future. In the it's distant coming future. closer and closer. <laughs> it's great. Um, well, where can folks find you uh, for the rest of this week, I suppose, until, until we meet again? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, you can follow me on the social medias. I am uh, DJ Pirate Rabbits. Uh, I'm also here on Twitch. I stream my DJ streams over on my channel, at, which is also DJ Pirate Rabbits. And then, um, yeah, and then I'll be back here next Sunday with, with, more, with more nerdy stuff. Fantastic. So how about you, Rich? What's, what you got going? 
Whew. Um, I keep forgetting. Uh, apparently, I'm launching a Kickstarter pretty quick. Um, it is for uh, the next segment of the Academy of Adventure summer camp. So if you've got kids ages 11 to 15 looking to spend uh, a week of their summer learning to play D&D, &D, um, send them my way. Uh, they'll launch on like it's may 3rd i believe may 3rd um and that's also going to come out with an adventure if you don't have any kids and you just want a cool adventure um you can back that as well <laughs> sweet uh and then uh for everybody in the audience uh make sure and stick around uh we have coming up next a uh, new pantheon academia uh also make sure to sign up for the patreon get in early uh time is running out to get your 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 sweet uh pins and uh yeah and i think that's yes, all we indeed. got so so uh you know i'm going to go ahead and uh put the crock pot on keep warm and uh we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna take off so uh, see all you right. all next week thanks see you so next much week. <laughs>